All right, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, on this video, we're going to try and fix a 29 inch uh, tri mode Mac Vision monitor. Uh, this is a 24.8 inch. This is also faulty but operational, so we'll cover this in a separate video. For this one, we're going to concentrate this video on this one because of what's going on with it. So this is actually a 29 inch that I call them Mac vision because they came branded as a Mac vision monitor, but they're really, a, the, the chassis itself is we uh, W E I dash Y a, however you want to pronounce it. But this is a 29 inch model. This is the, out of a 24.8 inch model. And the way you can tell this is, well, they are slightly different. This board is green versus this board being brown. Uh, but on the side of these, the way you identify these is on the side here, you'll see, uh, 29 inch chassis model 3921 I'm sorry 3129 yes yeah, sorry <laughs> I was look, looking through the viewfinder and it wasn't I wasn't caught up there C 3129 Delta 29 inch chassis so C 3129 Delta now that's a 29 inch 3129 27 slash 29 now this is the 24.8 inch and if we look at this one they just rounded up to 25. So 31 C3125 Bravo. So this is how you can tell what size of, of monitor these are used for. C3125. This is the 24.8 inch and for all intents and purposes 25 inch. But you can see here MacVision Incorporated by Wii products. So it's a MacVision monitor, but it's a Wii chassis. Not to be confused. So those are how you can spot the differences between these, uh, assuming these labels are still there. But, okay, so I acquired this off of a complete full monitor. Uh, this was gifted to me from somebody who had a, a, a Multicade, and the, the chassis here decided to, to collapse a bit. Uh, the bottom of the image is still there, but it shifted up and you can't shift it down, and the top half of the image is just has these horizontal lines on it. So it does operate and work and provide raster and, and a, a picture, but it's the top is missing, it's just got a bunch of lines, and the bottom half is squished and shoved up. So I fully capped it, fully reflowed it, and it made no difference. It still has the same problem. So we're going to actually troubleshoot this in a separate video if we can. Uh, so what I did was I actually bought this 29 inch model on eBay because I wanted to grab some spare parts for this one. But uh, this was, I think I paid 40 bucks for this uh, in untested condition, which as we know, untested obviously means not working. So, you know, if this was a working chassis, it'd still be on the tube. So yeah, I purchased this for like 40 bucks to get some parts for this one. Uh, but when I tested it, it turned on, I had high voltage, I had neck glow, but I had no raster. Uh, I had no image on the screen, I could turn the flyback up all day long, brightness contrast, and I had nothing. The, the neck glow was barely there. You had to turn all the lights out in the room to see it. So it did provide neck glow, it did provide, albeit very, very little bit, uh, it did provide high voltage and it operated, turned on, and it worked. Uh, but it had no neck glow, so I thought, hmm, okay. Based off my previous experience, with the uh, neck glow but no raster, I suspected something with the neck board. So I took the neck board off of the working chassis, uh, even though it had the, the vertical problems, it did provide a raster and work. I took the neck board off the working chassis and put it on this one and it works perfectly. Beautiful full picture colors image, it's glorious. So that means that something is wrong with this neck board. So I, in a previous repair attempt, I tried to, I thought maybe the RGB amplifier chip was bad. So I took it out, put a socket in the, in the board, and I put the one from the working board into here and it made no difference. So I put this one back. Now there's supposed to be a capacitor across the top of this that I installed on the back side because I wanted to be able to swap the chips out. Uh, I just need to take this and put it back on the top. But uh, same thing with this one. So I wanted to rule this out first. So I took the, R the RGB amplifier chip off the working neck board, put it on here, turned it on, I still had no raster. So I put everything back the way it was. I need to go ahead and put the caps back on the top. But now that we know it's not the amplifier chip, it's something else on this board. So for this video, we are going to do some contrast and compare, and we're gonna see if we can figure out what's wrong with this neck board that's causing no raster. Uh, and I'm torn between hooking this back up and showing you that there's no raster 
but I think you can trust me that when I have this on the tube and I turn it on, the neck glow is barely there. I mean, you have to turn everything off in the room and be a totally dark room to see the neck glow, but it is there. And I can turn the flyback up all the way. I can turn brightness contrast up all the way. And there is nothing on the screen. It's, it's no raster whatsoever. Uh, so just take my word for it. That's the case. So I know it's not a capacitor problem on the main board. I know it's not the main board because when I put this one on here, it works flawlessly and beautifully like it left the factory. So there is something wrong with this one and it's going to come down to trying to figure out what it is. So I think we should probably just go ahead and cap the neck board first in case there's just simply a bad capacitor. And then we'll try it out after that. If that doesn't work, then we'll dive in deeper. So for right now, we will take this one and set it aside since we're not going to need it right now. And I'm going to, you know what? Yeah, let's hook this up and I'll show you what's happening just so you can see, because it's always nice to be able to see a before and an after. Um, I'm going to get this cap. Let's get this cap back on the side that it's supposed to be. And like I say, I have tested, oh, come on, get out of there. I have tested this amplifier chip in both the working board, both of these chips from the working board and this board, both of them in the working board and it, they both work. So it's not the amplifier chip. I mean, I've said that before, but just kind of reiterating that. All right, this may be difficult to do without <sighs> empty, <laughs> getting those holes. Uh, you know what, since we're gonna cap it anyway, this is a 220, microfarad. Let's grab a 220 and here they are. And let's just put a brand new one in since we're going to do that anyway. That way we have extra leg length here to work work with. All right, so it's conveniently marked on the board. Positive is top. And let's get those holes opened up because it'll just make it easier on us. There's one and this one's probably going to prove more difficult. It's a bigger trace. Got it. All right. This one's going to be more difficult. Immediately gets it. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, 25 volt, 220 microfarad. We're going to put in a 50 volt, 220 microfarad. So we'll toss that one away. And we'll get uh, this going by putting a new cap in here. All right, let's kind of straddle that. So this is how that sits in there like that. <laughs> and you want to make sure you're not touching any of the legs on the chip. So let's kind of bend this out a bit, make sure we don't. And then we'll raise this up slightly and I think we'll solder it in like this. There we go and all right so now let's hook it back up to the tube and that way you can at least see uh, what's happening because it's always nice to have a frame of reference. I mean, I can tell you what's happening, but you know, when I watch repair videos, I want to see the problem before. That way it's nice when you get it fixed, you're like, oh, it's nice to see it actually working after seeing it not working. So let's make sure we don't have any bridges that we shouldn't and that all looks okay. Yep. All right. And we need to, only other solder connection is the G2 wire. So let's get that in here. We're gonna have to take it right back out, but that's fine. And I'm probably gonna have to just wick this away. Can you wick it all away, hey? Can you wick it all away, hey? All right.
Green Acres is the place to be. Farm living is the life for me. Land spreading out so far and wide. Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside. Dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -bum -bum. New York is where I'd rather stay. I get allergic smelling hay. I just adore a penthouse view. Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. Okay, we're all hooked back up. Sorry for the Green Acres uh, serenade there, but it <laughs> just popped in my head. Uh, we got anode neck, yoke ground, power, video, remote. Uh, of course, remote is all right here. It never gets disconnected. Pretty much hardwired in, but uh, yeah, we're gonna use test pattern generator. Let's turn it on. We have our video little interface adapter here for the VGA connector, since it's, you know, of course, tri mode. Uh, yeah, so let's turn it on, and you'll see that uh, we have no raster, but we do have net glow. So let's turn it on here real quick. One, two, three. Takes a few seconds, and yep, kicks right on. High voltage, you can hear it running. Um, and we get nothing whatsoever at all. And I've turned up the flyback and the brightness and contrast. And it's not currently all the way up now, but when I was testing before, I did that and it made no difference at all, nothing. So if we turn the light out, you can see that there is, I don't even know if we can focus on it. Uh, yeah, let's, let's right. I think that's it right there. No, those are caps. You can't even see it, but it is lit on. Hang on, I gotta get this in frame and then we will. Okay, it's right there. Now let me turn the light out. Sorry about that, here we go. There, you can see how dark that is. You can barely see it. It's there, but holy Lord, that is almost non-existent. So it does have neck glow, it does have high voltage, and it does operate, but it looks like that. So we need to figure out what's going on with the neck board. There's something with the neck board, because if I take the other one and plug it on here, this is a beautiful, glorious picture and image. So let's troubleshoot further. Let's start by just recapping the entire board and testing again. I may just go ahead and do that off camera. I can fully cap the neck board, come back, I'll have it recapped, and we'll, ready, we'll be ready to test it again. So let me do that and see if that helps us out at all in our situation. All right, full cap kit on the neck board has now been completed. I ended up having all the necessary caps on hand. Uh, you know, I got a big mess of extra caps here, so I was able to successfully completely recap the entire neck board. And now it's time to see if it works. I haven't tested it. Let's see what happens here. One, two, three. Okay, it comes on. Let's turn on test pattern generator. Oh, I left it on. Darn it. But, um, nothing. Dang it. All right, let's turn off the light and... Oh, I got my... You can see a little bit of orange there. I left that window open over there. Uh, but yeah, no change. Dang it. Well, if it's not caps, it's something else. Let's go through and see if it's a diode or a transistor or something else. Um, I'm not uh, hopeful, but maybe we can figure it out. Well, it is now multiple days later. I took a break from this to work on some other stuff, and I came back to it, and I painstakingly went through every single component. I checked every single resistor, every single diode, every single PNP and NPN transistor, we replaced the uh, RGB amplifier chip, or swapped it with the known good working one. Uh, I changed all the caps out. I reflowed and checked every solder joint, and I found no anomaly. I found nothing wrong. I ch even changed out, or swapped out the high voltage cap here uh, for the heater circuit. I did everything humanly possible to this, and I could not figure out the problem. Uh, so I put it away and came back a few days later, and I realized that when this is the one that was working uh, from the chassis, it had the vertical problems, which we'll work on that one later. Uh, for the scope of this video, we're trying to get this neck board working. Uh, so <clears throat> I noticed that when I was swapping these out, that this one slides on and off with the greatest of ease. Shoop, shoop, right on and off. This one was incredibly difficult. I had to kind of wiggle it and <clears throat> snap it on and then trying to get it off. I had to use two hands and force it off. So I thought, well, maybe that this next socket is the problem. 
So I removed the original neck socket and I put a neck socket on from a donor chassis that was actually from a television. A television donor chassis here. Get off there, you. So I stole the neck socket from this and I installed it on here. And after that, this thing slides on and off with the greatest of ease, just like this one. So I hooked it up, turned it on, and fixed. Full raster, beautiful colors. Hooked this one back up, same result. So this one is undamaged from our testing, so this one is still good. This one will pair back up with the chassis that has the collapse problems. Uh, and this is the original one from the chassis that had the no raster. So this is now fully repaired and working, and at all that time it was simply a bad neck socket. Now I have no explanation as to why the socket is bad. If we look through the holes, all of, the, all of it looks okay. All I can suggest is that something internally in this thing is not working properly. But I took the original neck socket off, put a plate replacement on, and it now works as advertised. So after all of this effort, see I went through and one by one, I checked this resistor against the working one, checked this one against the working one, so on and so forth. And everything you see with the Sharpie mark on it, I have gone through and checked painstakingly component by component, and I found nothing out of the ordinary. And I even swapped out the high voltage cap, like I say, it's got the black mark. I did everything you could possibly think of. I checked the color transistors. We know it wasn't the IC, it wasn't the caps. I did everything, and it all came down to a bad neck socket. So let's get this back on the tube and I'll turn it on to show you that it's working and we can wrap this repair up. So here we go. Well, all hooked back up, ready for testing. Uh, the neck board's all reconnected and everything's back on it. And it slid right on with the greatest of ease as opposed to, I did have to fight it. With this one installed on the, on the neck board, I had to kind of wiggle it around and push, push with my fingers. It's kind of rather difficultly hard. You know, it didn't really cross my mind that the, the socket itself could be at fault. Um, but in hindsight, yeah, I probably should have gone to that first. I mean, I may be over-exaggerating a bit. It didn't take too much pressure. But when you take this one and it just slides right off and boop, slides right on. This one, I had to actually use a lot of force compared to that. So, you know, after hours of desperation going through component by component, not finding anything, the only anomaly between this one and the working one was the difficulty of the neck socket getting the neck board on. So yeah, that was it, bad socket. So we've got everything hooked up, ready for testing. Um, we'll turn test pattern generator on and here we go. One, two, three. Ugh, it's always nerve wracking waiting for these to come on. Uh, but uh, look at that, <laughs> right away, came right on. There you go, um, bad neck socket. So I did also notice that these actually, I mentioned before and showed in the video that this had barely any heater glow at all. And I thought it was actually a symptom of the, the, the fault. But if we zoom in on this and look, I'll turn the light off and there's hardly any. You can barely even see it. Let's make sure we're zoomed in on right there. Let's turn this off. And yeah, I mean, that those two, three little twinkles you see is all the heater glow that you get. But even with that, it's a bright, beautiful picture. So that's just normal for the MacVision tubes, I guess, or the Wii Yaw is really what these are. It's a MacVision brand with the Wii Yaw chassis. But so that's normal. I, I assumed that was part of a symptom of the fault, but nope, that's normal. So yeah, uh, oh, sorry. I hit the camera with the end of the deal. Uh, bad neck socket. So yeah, this one is actually the original one for this chassis. Uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, no, this is the original one for this chassis. Yeah, I've been troubleshooting this one. Uh, this one goes with this other chassis that has the vertical deflection problem, and it'll be a video all unto itself, so stay tuned for that. Um, I still have to, now I have to recap the entire main board now that I know that it's working, so that'll be done separately here. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, yeah, bad neck socket. All that time and effort came down to a bad neck socket. So. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Make sure you click the bell notification so you know when new videos are out. Especially uh, stay tuned for the repair of this one. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.